at the bottom. Yeah, what we uh, what the, we consider the homo part. Well, it's the the whole thing. Let me let me uh go ahead and show you that because that's a good question, right? So for a four pi system, if you remember from the diagram, the homo looks like this. Is that right? Let me let me fix that first one. That looks like some kindergarten stuff. Right, so the homo of a four pi system looks like this, right? Where the wave passed through one time. You following? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's the homo, right? And then the lumo looks like this for a two pi system, right? That's what the lumo for a two pi system looks like. Right, so when these things overlap, when the orbitals overlap, right, if if an orbital is unshaded, it can only overlap with another unshaded orbital. Otherwise, it's going to be what's called destructive overlap. So they're going to cancel each other out because like, they got a different sign. So this orbital and this orbital have to overlap, and this orbital and this orbital have to overlap in order for you to share those electrons between those atoms. Right, so gotcha. it's not necessarily uh, which double bond is up or down. It's the homo, the whole pattern of the homo that you have to think about. Okay. Yeah, that's a good. That's mm -hmm. a great question. Right. Okay. So this, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. I'm glad you asked that. So this is the homo of the four pi system, and then and this is the lumo of the two pi system, and that's how they have to overlap. Okay. How do we identify that while it's in that form? You know what I mean? Like, how do we know which part what, what, is Which orbitals? It? Yeah. So, so then the, the, uh, the way you identify is you have to memorize that MO diagram, right? Okay. You no, know it starts at zero with no nodes and everything is the same. All the orbitals are shaded on the top and all the ones on the bottom are unshaded. Then you go up to the next energy okay. and you pass through once. So you have to you have to memorize that in order to know what the homo is. Gotcha. I'm gonna go back and learn that. I'm gonna catch up with that. Okay. All right. And no problem. That's a great question. I'm glad you asked that question because this is what the uh, and if you watch the uh, video, it's in there too. But this is what the transition state looks like for a Diels Alder reaction for a four plus two, where the homo and lumo kind of come together and. Hey, the orbitals overlap, and that's how you share electrons. That's a great question, though. All right. So I'm going to erase this part. This is being recorded, so don't panic. And I'm, we're going to go back to the example that we were just doing. All right, so this is my four-pi system, and this is my two-pi system. All right, so what? how would you start the mechanism off? Because it, it never changes. Um, the four pi system would act as a nucleophile, right? Yeah, so it's going to donate some electrons, right? So let's push this pair of electrons here. What what that arrow means is that this carbon right here and this carbon right here are going to have a sigma bond between them in the product. Yes or no? Mm-hmm. All right, and then I'm going to take this pi, pi bond and move it here. Right, and I'm gonna take this pi bar and move it here. The the mechanism never changes. Once you've identified your come on. Okay. The arrow is, is going to the it's not going in between those two, right? It's stopping at the first one. It don't yeah. go in between those. No, no, no. You no no no. You talking which arrow the, the first arrow I drew or the second one? The first one. Yeah, so it it it, it don't go in between those two. Mm -mm. So you le you you're basically taking so let let me back up. So the pi bond itself is a pair of electrons. Is that right? Right. So I'm going to take that pair of electrons in that pi bond and donate them to this carbon right here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if it's and that's that's the same. Let me give you a, a, a even simpler example. If I had a nucleophile like this, that was negative, right? And I had another CH3 over here that was positive. 
when I put an arrow between them, that means I'm making a bond between them. Are you following? Mm -hmm. And so the same concept holds over here. When I put an arrow between basically this carbon right here and this carbon, that means I'm making a bond between those two. I'm just okay. using the electrons and the pi bond to do it. Okay. Yeah. Good question. Thank you. Mm-hmm. All right. So then, and the reason I have to break, let, let's, let me ask this question too. Why do I have to break this pi bond? That carbon would have too many bonds. Yes. The carbon that's on the bottom, where I'm making that new bond to, it, it'll have five bonds to it if I don't break that pi bond. So everything happens in a cycle. So once I push this pair of electrons here, then the pi bond has to break. And those electrons get shared to this carbon right here, right? And then this pi bond has to shift over because of the same thing. If I don't move it, uh-oh, sorry about that. If I don't move this pi bond right here, if I don't move it to here, then this carbon is going to have too many bonds to it right here. And you, you're not going to have that, right? So all those electrons move with a purpose. Let me get all this little. All right. So what's the product going to look like? Right. First of all, it's going to be a six member ring. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we know that. So we could draw a hexagon, can't we? Yeah. Well, look at, listen to me and look at my hexagon, how crappy it looks. All right. We can draw a hexagon. And then if you want, if you want to number these, you can number them. Sometimes that that helps to keep track. All right. So I'm going to number that one, two, three, and four. And I'm going to number this five and six. All right. So over here, this is one, two, three, four. That's five. And that's six. That'll help you when you get ready to put the substituents back in if you got any substituents. All right. So <clears throat> what do you think? What's what's connected to six on the left side of the arrow? Bromine. 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 So, so in the product, I'm going to put that bromine right back where it belongs. Are you following? Because mm -hmm. no atoms get disconnected, right? All you're doing is make, either making sigma bonds or shifting pi bonds, but you're not disconnecting any atoms. What, what's on carbon two in the, uh, on the left side of the arrow? A double bond. On right. carbon two, well, substituent wise now. It's three CO. But but yeah, but you're right though. You're right because that the double bond is gonna be here, right? I think that's what you were saying. Am I, am I right? Is that what you were talking about? Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you for catching that. And then there's also a, a group on there, right? The OCH three. Is that right? Yeah. All right. So you can't leave off your substituents. They got to stay. So that's why it's best to just draw the six member ring first and then go back and put the double bond in. The double bond is always going to be shifted. If you number it this way, one, two, three, four, like that, the double bond, you can memorize this. The double bond is always going to be between two and three. If this is the way you number that diene. All right. Any questions about anything? Mm -mm. All right, let's do the next example. You want to number it again? I'll take that as a yes. Right, so this is my diene. This is my dienophile. <clears throat> and so how am I going to start this off? Am I going to do something different this time? No, connect no. four and five. Four to five. See that? You see how you see how how um, repetitive this becomes. And once you get once you get that repetition, it never changes. It's going to continue to be uh, the same. The mechanism never changes. And then what happens here? 
six to one. Is that right? And then what else? What else do I need to do? Move the bar. Right there. Is that right? So if you're if you're following along, which I hope you are, go ahead and draw the product. I wish you could draw it on my screen. There's a way to do it, but I forgot. I had another student, uh, in one of my summer classes, who knew how to do that. Oh, who was that? Oh Lord. There's a pen option that you just click. Oh, well, well go ahead. Is that Sage? <laughs> I was just trying to know what was going to work. I didn't think you could see it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I see it, bro. So to go ahead and draw, <coughs> excuse me, draw the product up here. If you got that pen out. Look at that. Look at God. Look at God. <laughs> yeah, out okay. It's, it's raggedy, but I, I see it, though. I see it. it well, I, you know, I got, you know, I, I don't care about no virus. Now I got to keep my, my sense of humor. That's what keep the class happy and lit. Me being a goofball. Is that right? This is what you was trying to do. But, I, and I, I. It's early. It's early. It sure is. We got a lot. We can, yeah, it's early now. Is that is that Okay. That's what you drew, too, by the way. I like that. Are you writing on your screen with your finger? Yes. Okay. All right, bet. You got a touch screen laptop? No, I'm on my phone. Oh, got you. All right, yeah. All right. So this is the product, yes? Right here. Right, and then we put the numbers back in. That's one, two, three, four, five. And six. Do you do y'all see that or no? Yeah. All right. Oh. Go ahead. 